right together as a church body to hear from God and to do what he wants us to do. Let's lift our hands to Jesus right now. Father, we know that you have a purpose and a plan for tonight. And Jesus, we want to be on the same agenda that you're on, Father. We engage your presence. This atmosphere belongs to you, Lord. And we clap our hands and lift our voice to you, Jesus. Knowing, Father, that in your presence there is liberty. In your presence there is power. In your presence there is possibility for the things that are extraordinary and supernatural. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're determined to stand on the promises of God tonight, just lift up your hands and your voice right now and just say that unto God. God, I'm standing on your promises tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Alabasieta. Come on, clap those hands.
through situations and can't quite put our finger on what we need, but we realize later on it's just the presence of the Lord that we need it. And when the presence of the Lord is there, there's comfort because there is comfort and He is the comforter. If you're going through a situation where you just need the Lord's presence there, you don't even know exactly what you need Him to speak. You don't really maybe know exactly what you need Him to do. You just know you need the Lord there. Would you lift your hand right now? And I am going to pray that the Comforter would come to you and would bring comfort. Lord Jesus, I pray right now for every person who needs you to step into a situation. I pray, Lord God, that when you show up, when you show up, miracles happen. When you show up, provision is provided. When you show up, healing. When you show up, miraculous works are made available. Jesus' first miracle was performed because someone invited him. They just wanted him there. And when he got there, he did something only he can do. I encourage you tonight, invite him to just be there. You may not even realize you've got a need. But when he gets there, there's going to be something exposed. And you're going to realize, I need him to do what only he can do. They didn't know they were going to run out of what they needed. But when Jesus showed up, he gave them everything he, they needed. And it was the best they'd ever had. I want you to lift your hands one more time and say, Jesus, I just need you to show up. Because when you show up, I am going to have the best. When you show up, you're going to bring what's best. Hallelujah. seem simple but you never know when you're going to have a need so it's always good to have Jesus around that way when you get in trouble you don't have to go hunt him down you don't have to go through a bunch of stuff had he not been there they would have been like Martha and Mary who had to go towns away to find him but they had invited him to be a part I want him to be a part of everything so that when I have a need, he's already on scene. I don't have to get over stuff. I don't have to search through things. I don't have to make amends for things. I I can just say, you're already here, so why don't you just do what you do? Would you clap your hands? Chuck Duke, I see you back there. Hadn't seen you in church in several months. It's good to see you back there this evening. We embark now on the busiest week uh, on our Calvary calendar. And uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. The ushers are preparing to receive our offering. You may be seated. Awakenings Cleaning Day. There's already been some cleaning, but there's going to be more cleaning take place here tomorrow from 5 to 9. And it's an open house party. You just come and go as you're able to be here. Between 5 and 9, the doors will be open. Uh, Stop by the Welcome Center on your way in to get some instructions on what area we need your help in. Any questions, reach out to Michelle Yin or call the church office and she will help you with that. Tell someone beside you there's no Wednesday night connect here this Wednesday. But we 
have church here on Friday night at 7 p.m. Pastor Aaron Bounds will be preaching Saturday morning. Now, this is different. Usually Sunday is 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., but this, it's Saturday. So tell someone beside you, hey, Saturday at 10. Dr. James Hughes and Drew Galloway will be preaching 6 p.m. on Saturday. Brother Mark Morgan will be with us, and I'm excited about him returning and being with us. And then on Sunday afternoon, Brother Bobby Wade will be here preaching. And God is going to do great things in our 2 p.m. service next Sunday. So again, tell your neighbor, no 10 a.m. next Sunday, only 2 p.m. You want to come at 10, you'll get a good parking spot. The door is open. Each service, one hour before service. Is that right, Brother Isaac? One hour before each service, the door is open. Please do not leave anything on the seats to save them. That will be removed, cast into yonder place. The following week, the 10th and 11th Ohio Ladies District or the Ohio District Ladies Conference is at the Naz in Grove City. Mickey Mangan is the speaker. You can register online, and the ladies president of Ohio would appreciate ladies being a part of that. Is that right, Sister Stark? Amen. She would be. Honored for all the ladies to be there, and uh, I know that you will be ministered to by Sister Mickey Mangan being there. We have a unique opportunity on the 15th of September. It's a Wednesday night. It's We're already ha- scheduled to have Connect, but I got a phone call on Thursday from Brother Raymond Woodward, and he said, hey, I hate to bother you, and he, but he said, I need some place to hang out for like five days. I said, well, what are you thinking? And he said, I was just thinking about coming to Columbus and just being there. Would that be okay? And I said, yeah, do you mind working while you're here? And I said, because if you don't mind working, we'll have you speak at New Destiny on Tuesday night and Calvary on Wednesday night. So the whole church body will be in here Wednesday night. That Wednesday we'll have church that night. Brother Raymond Woodward. will be here. I told him, I said, make sure you bring new stuff. He kind of paused for a minute. I said, because everything I can get my hands on that you've already taught, our church has already heard. So he said that he would be here and be happy to, to be a part. While you stand, the ushers are making their way down the aisle. You're going to receive our Sunday night tithe and offering. I want to thank you for your prayers and support uh, for Aubrey and her family as they yesterday buried James Barraza, her uncle James. It was a very sobering experience yesterday uh, when people began to talk about what a great man he was. Bishop Randy Keyes in Modesto uh, has been associated with that family since 1993 and he said yesterday that he never one time heard James Barraza complain he said I pastored him from 1993 until a few years ago when he became bishop he said but I've known him since 1993 and never one time did I hear a complaint come out of his mouth he faithfully served that church and I was impacted by those words yesterday. And uh, the pastor there said, he said, I I told God, God, he said, I laid under the organ where Brother James would play when he was well. And he said, I told God, God, I'll give you 25 people in exchange for James. And I probably won't even miss them. That's how much some people mean. And as a pastor... I share that sentiment that there are some people you just don't want to live without. And I got good news. All of you are going home tonight believing I can't live without you. Because we have to have the body. Amen. Number of ways to give. You can give here in the sanctuary. You can give online. You can text to give. You can drop it off at the church office. You can mail it in. There are a number of ways to give. Has God been good to anybody? Has God been faithful? 
If you found God to be a keeper of His Word, then I think it'd be good if we'd be keepers of the Word as well. If you have what you're going to give, would you just lift it up before the Lord right now? Lord Jesus, I pray that you would find each person in this house faithful to return what already belongs to you because you trusted us with it. And now, Lord God, we return it to you. It is yours, Lord God, because everything we have belongs to you because you made it all possible. So I pray that you bless every person, the gift they give and what they have left over. I pray, Lord God, that you would give what is given. You would, uh, you would bless what is given. And then, Lord God, I pray that you would go to the account of that was given from. And I pray that you would abundantly bless it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Could anybody stand to be blessed? Then let's walk and give in the name of Jesus. God bless you as you do give. Can we give you all the glory, Jesus?
children May His past, may His prayer Come before you And behind you And beside you All around you And within you He is with you He is with you In the morning In the evening In your coming And your going In your weeping And rejoicing He is for you He is for you where they sang the word and something happened that was so powerful I've never been in a service where it failed that when the word went forth something happened because he is his word and when you start singing the written word when you start rehearsing the written word he descends He's there. You bring God into the atmosphere when you start speaking His Word because He and the Word are inseparable because in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He is His Word. It's very fitting that the Sunday before Awakenings this year we have the Josh Herring with us who has been here two other times and there is a connection between he and this church and I hear great reports of the service this morning and I am excited about the things that Brother Herring told me about what he felt with the liberty that he felt here this morning and so this is our last service as a church body before awakenings before we give of ourselves before we serve in the capacity in which we are asked and so I'm asking you to lift your hands right now as Brother Herring comes and would you submit yourself to the will of the Lord for whatever task is before you this coming weekend and would you receive the word of the Lord from the man of God as he comes to preach the word. Lift your voice now. Amen. Halfway through your song service, about 20 angels descended upon the side of the platform. They're here. They'll be here all week. They're here early for what's about to happen next weekend. They're here. They're on site.
feeling it brush by you because they're in here. Just to say, if you feel the Holy Ghost, if you feel something coming from the inside up, that's the Holy Ghost. Feel it on the outside, that's an angel of the Lord. They've brushed by me several times. Great things are happening this week at your church. Heaven is already here. This is not something that I uh, planned to do tonight, but I have felt it come and go throughout the last 24 hours. First of all, I want to say I love Bishop and I love Pastor Stark. I appreciate both of them very much. You're so blessed to have an apostolic legacy, apostolic heritage, apostolic leadership. And I know you are appreciative of them and their families. And give honor to my, my beautiful wife, Janae, and our children who travel relentlessly with me. My, two of my boys are here with me tonight. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, and the atmosphere just shifted. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Somebody say the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Uh, my assignment tonight is to tell you about secrets about strongholds. Secrets about strongholds. The angels are moving in here tonight. Lord Jesus, have your way. Whatever you want to do, I submit to the will of God. I take authority over every distraction, every demonic spirit, every situation, God. Let the word of God thunder in our homes tonight. Let the word of God thunder in our relationships. Let the word of God thunder in situations out of our control. I pray tonight that you would start the awakenings early. In Jesus' name, would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. You may be seated. birthing of this message came from a statement from my pastor, Pastor Kinsey, who has high respect for you, Bishop, and he made a statement to me a few weeks ago, and that statement was that the enemy builds strongholds in our lives through breaches that have opened up due to past pain. He said a breach or an opening, something traumatic, something painful that you go through, that breach, if it remains open, becomes the pathway of which hell attacks you the rest of your life. You go through something traumatic, you lose someone, someone walks away, and then you wonder why you deal with uh, different things throughout your adult life. And maybe this happened when you were a child. It's because there's a breach that hell has chosen as the pathway to now attack you. It's funny how anxiety goes from situation to situation. People that get attacked with anxiety, it's usually not just one thing. It's that one thing when that situation is going on, but then when that situation is taken care of, they get anxiety about this and anxiety about that, and anxiety it just moves because it's a breach in the spirit, and now a stronghold comes. See, the devil only uses what he, know, what he knows will work in my life or your life. If you've never smoked a cigarette, he's not going to try to give you a drug deal in the parking lot after church because it's not going to work. Why would he bring something to you that he knows there's no breach there? 
but he watches where there is a breach, where there is an opening, where there is a weakness, and he uses that doorway consistently until that door is locked. Well, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I don't do immoral things. But if you talk about everybody in church, that is the breach that he will use on a continual basis and develop a stronghold. So I began to search, and I began to study, and I began to hear from God. And, and this is not a popular message, but here we go. Strongholds in the Greek is castles or fortresses. We are, we are to pull down these castles. These are fortresses of hell. They begin, they, they come through a breach, but then they begin to build a castle in your life. It's not just that it's a castle, it's, it's where it's located. As we know, when we read the scripture, you see that these strongholds are clearly in our mind because Paul goes immediately to talking to us about how to deal with them and he locates them for us by telling us to cast down imaginations and bringing these high things and these thoughts into captivity. And so it's, it's the plan of Satan. Can I just break it down simply before we get into it? It's the plan of Satan to build a stronghold in your mind because if he builds a castle in your head, he will begin to direct you from the inside out. I know we're not going to shout, but just get it. You might have the Holy Ghost all over you, all inside of you, but if you've got a king in your head giving you your orders, you'll have a struggle all the time while God's telling you to do this. There's another voice telling you to do that because there's an undealt with breach that's caused a stronghold, and now hell gives orders from here. And when you're getting your orders from the enemy, no one can tell you what to do. No one can tell you anything. And so the Bible said we are to pull down, signifying these things get into a high place where if you pull some, if you push something down, it's on equal level. But if you have to pull it down, it's above you. And he said you have to pull these things down. And the, the way you do that is you begin, first of all, you begin to cast down imagination. So you pull down the stronghold by casting down the imagination. The word imagination in the Greek is a reckoning or a computation, a reasoning or a judgment. And so something comes to your mind and you begin to make a judgment about it or you begin to reason about it and think about it and you begin to assume something like we talked about this morning. What you are doing is creating an imagination in your spirit. Like we said this morning, where you begin to get alone with your thoughts and now you're thinking this person said this and they are reacting that way. What's going on is hell has brought a thought to you that's now becoming an imagination and you're causing all these things that are coming to you to have residency in your spirit. You all with me so far? All right. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. So it starts off as a thought from the enemy. Can I preach to you? It starts off as a thought, but if it's not dealt with, the thought becomes a high thing. In other words, it is the desire of hell for the thought to become a brick in the castle. And when the thought comes to you, if you do not resist the thought, if you do not rebuke the thought, the thought gets residency in your spirit. Well, I would never do that. I would never actually do what I'm thinking. Hell's not worried about you doing it. They just want the thought to get residency inside of you so that you're controlled by these kind of things. Oh. A thought becomes a high thing when it's not resisted. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
That literally means flee from you, Brother Hector. He will seek safety by flight. In other words, when you start submitting and you start resisting, he's not just afraid of the confrontation. He's afraid you're going to chase him after it's over and you're going to hurt him. That's why submission is so powerful. Because if you get submitted, you get the authority to not just remove the devil. He gets scared to be in the atmosphere where you're at because he knows it's dangerous for him to be there. And every high thing, you see what high things do. They exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. What's that mean? That means the thought that's coming from the enemy comes with one purpose, to go against, to refute what God is saying to you. That's what he did to Eve. Hath God said... See, there's th- your, your brain has 10 quadrillion functions per second. And some thoughts are you, Brother Crowder. So if, you figure, if you're like, should I get 2% milk, 1% milk, almond milk? That's not the devil. I know some people make everything spiritual. Like, dude, choose what milk you want. It's not really that big of a deal. Okay. So some things are just you. Some things we know are God. When God speaks something clearly to you. Go bless this person. Go witness to her. Speak. That's not from you. That's a God thought. But if you know what's a you thought and you know what's a God thought, you should start knowing what's a demonic thought. Cheat on your wife is not you and it's not God. It's a demon coming as a thought trying to get a That's quiet. Trying to get a residency. Call someone and criticize pastor. That's a thought from the devil that wants to get into your spirit. Well, I'm not getting much help, but I'm just going to find you. It's a thought that has an initiative. It has an agenda to become a high thing to where it's part of the castle that controls your day-to-day activity. Here's the problem. If you do not resist the thought You release the thought to get residency in your life. You may never act upon it, but trust me, it's in there floating around somewhere. A thought that comes to the mind, the door of your mind becomes a high thing when it's allowed to have access. A panic attack is a thought that became a high thing. An anger outburst. Somebody cuts you off on the highway. Then a minute later, you're yelling at the kids. You're not mad at the kids. You're mad at the guy that cut you off. But the thought couldn't be released. But it gained residency because it wasn't resisted. Y'all with me? Some of you are starting to get nervous. The thought life is where hell fears the victory the most. Because if you ever get victory in your mind, I'm going to say it boldly. The devil would rather you win publicly while you fail secretly than to lose publicly, but you're winning secretly because all he cares about is taking you to hell. Everyone might think you're amazing, but if you're losing the battle at home, it doesn't even matter because the devil knows if I can get victory That's why when Paul stood before Agrippa, bound by chains, Pastor, when he stood there, he was standing in front of a man who was was in a legacy of killing people. His great-grandpa, Agrippa's great-grandpa was Herod, who murdered all the babies when Jesus was born. His grandpa was Herod, who took John the Baptist head off his father killed James in Acts 12 and Paul is standing before a man who comes from a heritage of murdering the people of God 
and says, I think myself happy. What do you mean? That means you can do whatever you want to me on the outside. I have pinned you in my mind. And if I shut up, if I get victory in my mind, it doesn't matter what I go through. Somebody ought to leave this house tonight with some victory in your mind. And you'll see the results manifest. Somebody with a spirit of offense, that's a thought that became a high thing. Proverbs said a brother offended is harder to be one than a, str- a strong city. His, his, they're, 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 what they're mad about, their offenses, their frustrations are like the bars of a castle. So when someone gets offended, you know what they do? Start thinking. That's why it's, it's not always safe to be alone with your thoughts. When you start getting alone with your thoughts, then isolating yourself from the body, skipping church, you're thinking too much. And your thinking is building high things. To, well, now I can criticize, I can disobey, I don't have to do what he says to me. Because when you start getting like that, You've been thinking yourself into a prison. And the Bible said that we are to to take these thoughts and bring them into captivity, which means we need to arrest them. It literally means to have a checkpoint, Uh, meaning that when something's coming to you, God wants you to have a gate. And when the thought comes to the gate, it has to be checked before it's allowed into your spirit. If it's not of God, you have the power to arrest the thought and remove the thought. If you don't, uh, that's why we have to stand on guard. Because if we're not standing on guard, the thought gets access. Now it's beginning to live inside of our spirit. But if we would set up the checkpoint, in fact, he said, tonight I will set up checkpoints in people's spirit. And when thoughts start to come to them that normally get through, they're going to say, wait a second. You're not allowed in here. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I've got a checkpoint up to block the thoughts of the enemy. Bring it into captivity. Now, that works if the thought is at the gate of your spirit, meaning that thought, that this this strategy of spiritual warfare Paul is describing, it works as long as you're dealing with it as soon as it comes to you. You can't just let it come to you and get in, and then it's been there for three years, and now you rebuke it. You can't cast out what you flirt with. You cannot remove by yourself what you've let in. Because that thought, its initiative is to take over. It's exalting itself now. Not against your knowledge. It defeated you by you letting it in. It's already going against the knowledge of God. Okay? So, what do you do about thoughts that have been there for a long time? Oh, boy. We're going to get some real victory. It's... What do you do about thoughts that are in the basement? It's getting real. The thought that's been there for years, it manifested. It's building the castle. You know it's there. I'm rebuking it. It doesn't go anywhere. It's because it's gained residency. There is, you cannot rebuke it out of you. You have to get God involved. Let me show you how to get God involved. Go to Jeremiah 4, 14. Jeremiah 4, verse 14. I want to start with this. 
O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? He gives you the answer before he asks the question. When the thoughts have been lodging, you have to get washed. You have to repent of them. Rebuking it works when it's at the front door, but repentance works at the cellar of your spirit. Rebuking it works when it comes to you, and oh my goodness, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. But when something's been there and it keeps coming up, you can't rebuke it, but you can say, I'm not leaving the service tonight until you wash me. I repent of everything that's been lodging inside of my spirit against your purpose. So if resisting it, arrest it, but you don't resist, you release it. If it's been released, it can only be removed by repentance. Hmm. Someone in here needs to rebuke while someone else needs to repent, but they're still dealing with the same enemy. He said, you're going to have to get rid of these, these thoughts a different way. You're going to have to use a different process to dig the stuff out. It's kind of like barnacles on a ship, Pastor. The, these things attach themselves. They're not part of the ship, but because they're allowed to attach themselves, they now are connected to the ship. They have to be scraped off because they are now sailing with the ship even though they're not of the structure. When the thought comes to you, ask yourself this question. If it's not me and it's not of God, what's it trying to do to get in me? Why are you here? And so, God, I need you to get into the crevices of the bitterness and the rebellion and the insecurity and the fear and the anxiety and the lust and the addiction. I need you to get deep into the crevices of my thought life. <laughs> Some of you are nervous right now. Sorry that I said the word addiction. But you're not going to get victory over your pornography problem. It's in this room. You're not going to get victory over it by sitting there saying, I hope God just keeps washing me. You're going to have to get to a place where you go digging in the cellar. Oh, it's quiet now. I'm sorry. That I was... Do you want real victory or petty, fake victory? I... Do you want real deliverance? Because real deliverance will get in your purse. Real deliverance will get on your phone. I'm not getting all of you. Some of you, are you know why some of you are mad? You like the devil that's connected to you. When you resist this word, that means you are infatuated with what the enemy is talking to you about. I cannot cast the devil out that you are wanting to live in. But if you really belong to Jesus, you ought to say, God, before awakening start, I want every thought to bring you glory. I want to be a vessel of honor, a vessel of submission, a vessel of purity. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, you get victory in your thought life, it changes everything. He said, uh, you got to get uh, these, these things that are lodging only get out by washing. Now, here's the deal. When you get washed of the thought, when you repent of the thought, the thought is removed, okay? But listen, what is removed? I want you to put this in your spirit. What is removed must be replaced. If a spirit leaves and you don't replace where it had residency, 
it comes back, what, seven times stronger. What happens? What happens there is you celebrate the victory, but you don't replace the residency. How do you replace thoughts of evil? Let's go back to the word, Philippians 4. Ah, that was the devil I'd leave right now. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Make yourself think about what God is doing and you're actually replacing. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Did you hear what so-and-so did? No, but that's a good person. Well, you know what they said. I don't need to know. They're a good person. What are you saying in the spirit? I'm saying I'm choosing to keep my thought. Do you hear about this? Yeah, I heard. But I'm not going to let it skew my view of what God's doing. Because I can't afford those seven other things <laughs> to try to come back in the door. I need hell to know we can't come there. He's got virtue. He's got purity. He's got righteousness. He's got all these things that weren't there. Before. We've been replaced. Well, the devil's trying to stop me from becoming rich. He is not trying to stop you from becoming rich. He'll do anything to get you lost. He'll give you all the money in the world. He wants access to your mind. But when your thoughts are giving God glory, here's what the Bible said. When you have a readiness to, you will get a readiness, watch this. I saw this right before church, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled when you arrest the thought when you repent of the thought when you remove the thought when you replace the thought you take revenge on the thought that literally in the Greek means you punish the thing whatever was sent to you doesn't just leave it is punished for even coming near you You think nothing of it, but the demons leaving going, I wish I wouldn't have come and attacked her like that because an angel's got it by the throat. Now I know why they're here. Now I know why they're here. They are here to remove spirits that have been coming against your mind. And when they grab that spirit, they are going to escort that thought away from you and Punish it for coming against your family, for coming against your marriage, for coming against your child, against your ministry. The angel of the Lord will take revenge. Somebody worship Jesus right now. He said, as soon as you obey the thought that was sent to make you disobey gets punished. The thing that's making you rebel is about to get revenge upon it. That's why it's more powerful than you think when you pray, God, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. You think you're just quoting David, but what's going on is 
You're saying, would you deal with the thing that's tormenting me? I feel to tell someone right now, this is not in my notes at all, but some of you that are being tormented are going to leave this place tonight and never be tormented in your mind the rest of your life because God is going to drag that thing out of the basement and say, get out of her. Get away from him. I've got a new thing for them. I'm going to remove you. Stay standing. And once God takes revenge upon it, are you ready for the word of the Lord? You are now in the position after you've resisted, you've repented, you've removed it, you've replaced it. It's taken revenge upon it. Now you're in a position to receive a thought from God. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think not of you towards you. It means I push them to you. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil. Here's what I want you to get more than anything I've preached tonight. To give you an expected end. This is deeper than you think. To give you an expected end. In the Hebrew, Bishop, and I know you know more this than I do, but that literally says to give you the end that you hope for. Wait. Faith is the substance of things. When you have faith for something, what you actually have is a God thought. When you believe for something to happen, pastor, in this city, that's not coming from you. And I know you're powerful. That's a thought from God manifesting as faith. You can't have faith thoughts if you've got the frustrating thoughts of the enemy consuming you. But if you get the stuff out, you are now in position to hear and see what God wants you to hear and see about your future. Several of you have your hands raised right now because you're receiving this. Lord Jesus, release thoughts from your throne about situations. Release thoughts that produce faith. Release thoughts that change the dynamic, that change the atmosphere, that change the direction. He said, I'm pushing a thought to you. Can you hear the thought of God? Or are you dwelling on the thoughts of hell? Because I'm pushing a thought to you, Brother Hector. I'm pushing your destiny to you. I'm pushing what I want you to be to you. I come against the spirit of hopelessness, the spirit of spiritual suicide, the spirit of fear, the spirit of torment, the spirit of worry and panic. That's not of God. God said, I'm going to give you the end that you've been wanting. It's not even you. I give you the desire of your heart. That's why it's really awesome to praise him when you have faith for something. We tell everyone, prophesy what you've got faith for. But truthfully, we should praise him for what we have faith for. Because what we're having faith for isn't coming from our spirit. It's a word from heaven. So I'm going to give you what? I'm going to double you. I'm going to increase you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to give you resources you don't even have. Hallelujah. 
receiving the thought brings the resources of heaven. The thought will always be above. It'll be bigger. When God sends the thought, you won't be able to make it happen on your own. Because it requires your faith. Meaning you can, you do not have the resources. But you have to receive the word. You have to believe it, speak it, pray it. Praise for it. Stay standing. I'm going to say this to you. I feel the Holy Ghost. When David looked at Goliath, he made a very profound statement. I've never heard, I'm sure people have preached it. But he said to him, this day I will take your head from thee. He's got no knife. He's got no sword. He's got no spear. He doesn't have the resources to complete what the thought just told him. Tell him I'm going to cut his head off. I'm going to cut your head off. You don't have the resources. Ready? But he saw the enemy, and David realized Goliath has a sword, a spear. Ready? Here's the revelation. What you come against me with becomes mine when I defeat you. What do you mean? If you're attacking my thoughts with depression, once I remove you, I'll deliver people from depression. You're attacking my thoughts with fear. Once I remove you and replace you with faith, I'll speak to the fearful and get victory in their atmosphere because the resource is connected to me receiving the God thought. Some of you do not have the resources for the things you've been praying for. You can't make it happen with your education, your finances, your connections, or even your prayer life. You could have, you would have. But the Lord said, all I want you to do is simply receive the thoughts I have to you and praise me for them. And I am going to send you the resources. What you're being attacked by is a signal of what you're going to be blessed in. Viper got a hold of Paul's hand by the fire because Paul's hand was about to heal everything on that island. He, the devil attacks where he sees you being used. And so if he's going to attack your mind, your mind, here's the last thought, is in a position where you will receive revelation from God. So here it all, full circle. Ready? You start by resisting these thoughts. Then you've got to dig and repent of some thoughts. And those thoughts will be removed. And you've got to replace these thoughts. And then when these thoughts are replaced, God takes revenge on them for coming. And then you receive the thoughts of God. Resources appear. And finally, you begin to walk in revelation from God to where he's always talking to you like he does bishop, like he does pastor. You think, think, you think they get up here two or three times a week have to bring something new every time? You think that's just them trying to find some? No, it's called walking in revelation because God thoughts are getting access to them and these thoughts now can be produced and be released to you. Are you with me? God said, I'm about to take some of you into a place of revelation where I speak continually to you about things I want you to see and hear and know, and all you need to do is write it down and receive, and I'll tell you when to release it. Welcome to the secrets of the stronghold. And God said, tell them when you get done tonight, I am going to tear every castle down before the altar service is over. I am coming for the kingdom of hell that's trying to give orders in their spirit. I am coming to bring down every brick. 
every command, every whisper, every doubt, every lie, every strategy, every thought of the enemy. I don't want you to dance in victory publicly if you're failing privately. I've come to give you victory beyond the altar call. I've come to give you victory beyond the public view. I've come for your thought life. Is there anybody in this room that wants God to take over your thoughts? Come, 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 repenting, come rebuking, come replacing, come removing. Come, 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 come. find it, find that place. And say, okay. I'm not preaching to your neighbor. I'm preaching to you. Don't be thinking, well, she really needs this. That's you looking in their basement. God wants you to search your own basement. God's going to increase your capacity to multiply, to have resources and great revival. But it starts in your thought. By the authority of the word of God, and by the power in the name of Jesus, we resist, we rebuke, we repent, we remove, we replace everything that's not of you. And I'm asking God right now, would you begin to push thoughts from your mind into this home, into this atmosphere, into somebody's spirit? Would you begin to show them their expected end? Would you lift up your voice and would you cry out right now? Would you cry out for God to get into your thoughts? There's not a greater place to walk in victory than in your thought life. There's not a greater place to walk in authority than in your thought life. If you get victory in your thoughts, you won't have the things manifesting and controlling you. Pastor just said, there's nothing that compares to a clear conscience. Get victory in your thoughts, you'll get victory in your motives. Sometimes we do things with the wrong motive. God wants to get into your motives, not just your methods, your motives. Ah, I come against manipulative spirits. He let the manipulative thoughts that do things. Some only serve to be seen. The action is great, the motive is wrong. I know God can use you on the platform, but can God use you in the lobby? David said, search me, O oh God. Try me. See if there be any wicked way in me. He said, get in the basement, God. Send your thoughts to the basement of my spirit. Send your thoughts to the places where I do what I do. And send your thoughts to my motives, to my agenda. Oh, I feel repentance in here right now. 
I feel heavy repentance. The Lord is calling you to repent before awakening start. That's what the Lord is doing. He's cleansing the deepest crevices of this church. I know you got it all together. You got the best leadership, the greatest talent. You got the great anointing upon. But I'm telling you in the spirit, what God's about to do at awakenings requires victory in the inner man. Ilata sata. Prepare the way of the Lord. You're going to hear thoughts from God this weekend. You can only receive them if the thoughts from hell have been removed and replaced this week with thoughts of praise. If there be any virtue, if there's anything you can praise him for. The Lord said to tell you, I don't want just praise from your lips. I want praise to get in your mind. God wants mental praise from some of us. I know we know how to sing and we know how to vocalize it, but can you think praise? Just walking around thinking, man, you're good to me. Well, you really love me. You're so amazing. I don't deserve you. I'm just thinking, but I'm praising him. I'm thinking praise. Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. If you're having a tough time being thankful, it's because you're not thinking about things that make you thankful. In everything, give thanks. Not, not for everything. He didn't say thank me when, because I'm making hell go crazy. But when hell is going crazy, thank me. Keep victory in your mind because you start tormenting the demons. They said, are you here to torment us before the time? See, the devil is not worried about being cast out. It's about where he's cast to. Wait, I cast you out of this house. Well, he's just going to go look somewhere else. But when you say, I cast you out to be locked up forever for coming here. You just caused a demon to be bound. And now it's being punished for what its agenda was. You can't speak that stuff if you don't have authority because you're not submitted or you're not in the right mindset. When I see a spirit coming to my home, attacking my kids or my wife, the first thing I tell it is, do you want to be tormented before your time? Because when you cross the line, dad, listen to me. When you cross, when the spirit crosses the line and it's getting at your kid or your wife, you need to stand up and speak a God thought in the atmosphere. And say, so you're not just leaving here. You're never coming back here. You will never be allowed out of your cell again because of what you tried to do. They fear being punished. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, he will flee. If you're resisting and he's not fleeing, it's not a faith problem. It's a submission problem. If the devil's attacking your marriage nonstop and you're resisting it and he's still coming, there's, it's not a faith problem. It's a submission problem to authority somewhere. You can't expect her to be submitted if you're not submitted to pastor. Am I okay right now? Am I okay? You cannot expect that type of authority if you're not under the authority. Oh, I feel Holy Ghost on me right now. But if you're under the authority, get out and be tormented for trying that. They were attacking my little boy, Jed, a few months ago. They have come left and right at my family. They were attacking him in his sleep. 
And so I took him to pastor, and I said, I, he's, there, he's having these crazy things. He, he starts describing what he's seeing, and just this evil thing. I don't know how, how he could have ever seen it. Pastor tells him, that's the exact spirit that came 20 years ago to our church, described by several people. My little boy was five at the time. Pastor laid hands on him, rebuked it. We pray. Five days later, God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Baptized him. A few months later, this stuff comes back. Wakes me up. Daddy, I don't know what this is. I said, okay, all right. You go sleep here. I'm going to your room. And I just laid there and waited for it to come in the room. About two hours later, here it comes, and I could see it move across. I said, I see you. And you could feel something in the room. And I just spoke these words. You came expecting to see my little boy in here. You will now be tormented forever because of what you've tried to do. I command you in the name of Jesus to leave here. And I said, God, the angel that's in the hallway, would you have him come in here right now? And would you have him take this thing out? And I saw something from the hall move toward the room. And my boy woke up in peace and has not had anything come to him again because there's something about taking authority. But do you see the process? I went to pastor, submitted to the man of God. And when you're in submission, you have the right to speak and say, no, not in this. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Pastor, would you make your way up here right now? Let there be a spirit of unity and submission so that every demon is nervous. And when you go home tonight, let them not even be in your house because God is going to give you authority over all of them. There are too many people waiting for me to pray them out of situations they could submit themselves out of. I can pray with you. I can believe for deliverance with you. But I cannot submit for you. And so I'm wasting my time praying for something that can be changed by someone. And you're wanting for it to be a spiritual act. And it is an act of the mind, of the body. It's an act in the flesh to be submitted. Would you just lift your hands and talk to the Lord a minute?
There's still some repenting that needs done. We move a little bit too fast when repentance is in the room because we think it's just a repeat after me prayer. It's not. Repentance is a death. And until you die, don't start rebuking. We're going to take care of some stuff right now. Because you, if you just go to rebuking, are going to say what he preached tonight is of no effect. But you had instruction before rebuking. There's some needs to be a prayer of repentance. And repentance is a death. That's why we can't just repeat after me. That's why we've got to die. And if you're not willing to die, then you're willing to live with your torment. That's why baptizing someone who's never repented is like burying someone who's still alive. That's illegal. Don't try, don't try to bury an issue tonight that's still alive. Destroy it. Kill it. I want you to do it again. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to repent before God. Bishop said, be thorough and be plain. Lay it out before the Lord. I want to say this to you right now. When, Matt, when Moses fasted 40 days, he came off the mountain. He snapped. He saw the golden calf, everything going crazy, and he, he broke the Ten Commandments. And, and then he said, Lord, show me your glory. Most people think he was on the mountain. He was down the camp. And God said, there's a place by me in the cleft of the rock, and if you climb the mountain tomorrow, I'll meet you at the top. And, and then God said this. This time, don't bring anything near the mountain, not an animal, not a human, anything. In other words, you're about to approach me and hear stuff and see stuff you've never seen. Don't come distracted with other voices, okay? And then the Bible said God showed him his hinder parts, which in the Hebrew is his past or creation, because that's where Moses Saw creation. How could he write what he didn't see? Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Right here's where he saw the God thoughts. But the problem was he was planning to approach God distracted with other things coming to him that had to be removed. You cannot get a God thought if you can't get off social media 10 hours a day. You cannot get a God thought next weekend if you're so glued to, to Netflix and stuff of the world. That, that's what the Lord is saying right now. I want you to repent of some things that have residency. Where is your time? You can't read two chapters, but you can spend two hours scrolling. There it is. The Lord's saying, give me your time. Ah, Solomahaya, repent for what's taking up your time. The voice is, you're trying to approach me distracted, and you're not going to hear me. But if you can block and remove the thing that's causing you to be distracted, you will see and you will know what you're only hearing off in the distance now. 
Would you lift your hands and give God your time this week, right now? Oh, how serious are you for a word from God? How serious are you for a word from God? If you really want to hear God next Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, you really want to have God talk to your situation, speak to your destiny, speak to your kid, speak to your future, then I challenge you, Moses, to climb the mountain the right way. Lay aside every weight. And every sin that doth so easily beset you. Someone needs to fast this week. Someone needs to pray more than 30 minutes. Someone needs to get a little more consecrated. So you can receive the thought from God. Repent with your mouth. Repent with your tongue. Repent with your words.
We have just witnessed the uh, operation of the gift of tongues uh, in conjunction with the gift of the interpretation of tongues, uh, and both messages uh, were absolutely of God. Thank the Lord right now for speaking to us uh, through His Spirit. This is what repentance sounds like from Psalm 51. This was the Psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. And here's how repentance sounds. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is ever before me against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. That's what repentance sounds like. And if you have not taken responsibility for your sin. You have not repented. Lift your voice one more time across this congregation. Take responsibility for your sin. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Someone else needs the cover of your voice so they can repent. And if you will not repent, there is no rebuking for you. There is nothing but devastation ahead of you. So I plead with you to repent. Now if you have repented, lift your hands and thank God for his forgiveness and for his cleansing. Now there's something I need to deal with. I've needed to deal with it for quite some time and this is the time. I have just been waiting for God to set the atmosphere and the stage and it has now been set. Brother Herring dealt with tonight with submission to pastoral authority and pastoral leadership. And maybe you have not thought of this and I trust that you have not engaged in this willfully. But the man of God who he has assigned to be the shepherd of this flock is not your buddy. He is not your pal. He is the man of God. And so if you want to be able to submit to his covering. You do not speak disparagingly or casually to him. Yes. Yes. He's grown up here. His name is Jimmy. 
But he's not your buddy. He's not your pal. He is the shepherd of your soul who has been called, called by God, who has been ordained to this office. And when you do not address him or speak of him with the respect that his office deserves, you devalue, degrade, and weaken his ability to cover you. And you need a pastoral covering. And so uh, I trust I have made myself clear. I don't want to ever have to deal with this again. But if I have to, I will. And probably the next time, it will be face to face against the offenders. So if you hear someone say something or address him in a way that is inappropriate, do them the favor of saving them from me having to, to deal with this again. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had the advantage of not growing up here. I was full grown when I got here. There have been a few people who disrespected me, and God dealt with them. And God has not changed. And so my very strong admonition to this church body, and I had absolutely no plan to deal with this tonight, but it's just the right time. Brother Herring, I don't know if you're still in here, but thank you. Thank you, thank you for talking to us about the value of submission to the man of God and the authority that that brings to your life. Now receive the man of God as he comes. If you've repented, rebuked, and made yourself submitted, I want you to lift your hands. I'm going to close my eyes, and I do not want you to lift your hands if you have not done those things. I want everybody's eyes closed because there are people here. I don't want you to lie in the presence of God. But if you have your hands up, now I can rebuke things that are in your house. I can rebuke things, and I can take authority over things that are in your life. But I cannot do that if you have not repented, rebuked, and submitted. And so I'm going to give you a second to make a decision while everyone's eyes are closed. Do not lie in the presence of God. Lying to the man of God in the book of Acts caused two people to die in the presence of everyone else. Don't lie. Now I take authority over every foul spirit of the enemy that has set up residence in every house, in every mind, in every family. I take authority over spirits of deception. I take authority over spirits of confusion. I take authority over spirits of carnality. I take authority over spirits of, of pornography, over lust of the flesh, lust, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I take authority over every spirit uh, that rises uh, in uh, this world that tries to attach itself to the people of God. I take authority over every spirit there now and I rebuke it and I cast it into utter torment and I pray that it would be bound in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be bound now as you are taken out of here by the angels that were here and that are here. Now I release you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to not be bound but to be free. In the name of Jesus, I loose a praise on your lips. I loose a praise of victory on your your lips now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because you have been made free 
I lose a shout of victory because you've been set free. I lose a praise of victory because you've been set free. If you've got victory, you should not be stopping right now. You should be giving more praise and more glory, more adoration. Some of you have been through a battle, and it feels good to be free. You ought to just celebrate freedom right now. Somebody celebrate freedom. Thank you for joining us for the service today. I trust that what you've heard and what you've felt makes a lasting impression on your life and brings blessing to your family. Please check out our social media and uh, I look forward to seeing you again right here.